little over 3,000 tacos. Four to $5,000, it just depends. Second year, I started to make profit. We're generating about 15 to 30,000 per month. My name is Luis Rios. Uh, the name of my business is Hotbox Tacos. Um, I got started in 2020, basically in quarantine. Just started cooking, just messing around with different batches. But I went to Mexico prior to quarantine and um, had tried a dish that was called Vidia in uh, Tijuana. Had an individual who was doing it at a taco stand, checked them out, checked out how his process was and just told my wife when I came back to the States, I was definitely gonna have to bring this back because um, it was something that I was like, this is phenomenal, this is the best taco I've ever had. So I wanted to bring that back to, to the United States and now I, that's what I produce now with Hotbox Tacos. Can you talk about what investments you had to make and what led you to do a stand versus starting with a maybe a food truck or a restaurant? As far as investments, I started with basically a loan from the bank, took out about 15,000 so then I could get um, a smaller cart. I didn't really want to go with the food truck because I didn't necessarily have a base of uh, followers at that time. Um, and I didn't really want to just go out there on the limb and just say, hey, here's my food without having a proven process of people wanting it or kind of asking for it. I kind of wanted to see before on the back end because I do have another business. I know how to scale that up and I didn't want to want to start right off the top. I kind of wanted to start at the bottom and kind of work my way up. Can you talk about your background before this business? Growing up basically just with my family, they did a lot of like traditional dishes and things like that. So I was always around cooking. My mom and dad loved to cook. So it was constantly something that I was always around exposed to. So that was something for myself as a child I love to kind of bring to the table now where my skill set kind of has given me just watching my mom, watching my dad, kind of also helping them in the kitchen has helped me to kind of become somewhat what I do now. Just prior to that though too, I kind of went learning about the business end of things kind of through my first business, which I did home healthcare. And that was through my father. My dad got sick. He was a, a diabetic, had had a couple heart attacks, things like that. So I had to take the, the initiative to take care of my father. That led me into the healthcare sector, learned a little bit about healthcare, learned a lot about just the different things that can kind of go on with taking care of somebody, but also getting them the care that they need. So I took, I took that initiative real serious for myself and for what I was doing. Went on to work into an office with 10 other ladies. I moved my way up into management, uh, learned the back end of like billing, learned the processes of hiring and firing, learned a lot about healthcare, the sector, and just what I needed to know to run my, my business at one time. I knew I wanted to, but I never really took the initiative or the leap of faith to do it. Kind of came into a bind, lost my job at the other job I had had that I was doing healthcare with, lost that position, was really, really at a real down time in my life. So what I ended up doing was my wife and I spoke, she ended up giving me the grant to, to, to do a, a home equity loan, took that money out, took about 20,000 out, started continuing home health care. I mean, it's first year, I didn't really make that that much, but I started to gross enough to pay myself. Second year, I started to make profit. And my third, now I'm in my fourth year now with continuum home health care. I have staff of over six people that work in my office for me. I do have individuals in Muskegon, in Holland, in Spring Lake, Grand Haven, Granville, and also the Hudsonville area. And I service all those areas um, through my company, Continuum Home Healthcare. And it's taught me a lot about business. It's taught me a lot about kind of earnings, losses, smart moves, moves not to make. That's kind of helped me do this business now today with Hotbox Tacos that I've learned a lot in the, in the midst of the four years that I've done Continuum that those mistakes I won't make with Hotbox Tacos. What is your day-to-day -day or week-to-week -week look like? Like, what are you doing to prep and prepare for events or? So a typical event like right now, we're gonna go and do catering for this week. We got two events that we're gonna do, a migrant family event that's gonna be for 200 people. And then the next following afternoon is for 150 people that's at a local school. So what we're doing, it's, it is Monday. We're here already prepping at the kitchen. It takes us about a day to prep the stuff that we got to get ready for the meats and then also all the veggies. We got to plan out all the different things that we're going to prevent or excuse me, to provide for the event itself. So if we're doing chips, salsa, we're doing any kind of meats, those have to be prepped in, in about two days prior. And then when we get to the event, it's basically warming those things up because we are not a food truck and we're not a restaurant. So we're not necessarily able to take the food just from you know the cart and just cook it there we have to do it here in the kitchen pre-prep it 
and then be able to take it that morning up to the event. But that's somewhat of a challenge. It's not always the easiest having to be at Edison Grand Rapids and we have to travel to other spaces or other locations that are not within GR. Those can be somewhat difficult, but we make it happen all the time for the events and for the customers that, that want Hotbox Tacos. So what are you doing to get these events? How are you advertising? Do you pay for any advertising? So we do pay for advertising on Facebook and Instagram. What we do is we run ads for catering. We also run ads for pop-up events as well. A lot of it's coming from word of mouth, um, to be honest with you. A lot of the stuff has come just from us doing a Facebook following we've grown pretty massively pretty quickly on that Facebook page just little by little just putting ourselves out it's only been five months that we've really been going at it full force but with those five months we've gotten some pretty major events that some of the competitors are, are definitely recognizing and seeing that we're definitely here to stay can you talk about what those events are we've been invited to do La U. Uh, that's a celebration of the Latin culture that's there in Holland, Michigan. That's a big, big festival that we were invited for. And that's over close to, you know, 5,000 plus people that will attend that type of an event. It's an important event to me as a child. I grew up with the Laup organization in Holland. I've also got invited to do the Tulip Time fireworks that were also in Holland. That's a huge event for uh, the Holland area. Tulip Time draws people from all over the country. So for us, that was huge exposure. We also got to do um, Taco Eating Fest that was done in uh, Muskegon. That was an awesome event that we got to be a part of. That was a three-day event that we were very, very fortunate to be asked to do that event. Also, Allegan Fork in the Road. That's also another event that we were very proud to be a part of. That's something that's new, a new wave that they're trying to do in Allegan, trying to do a food truck push and movement, just like Muskegon's trying to do. And we're trying to be at the cusp of all those movements. We're trying to be a part of all the new things that are going on within Holland, Muskegon, Grand Rapids, the local area here in West Michigan. We just want to be a part of any event or any catering that you might need for us. We'll take care of you. What are some of the biggest expenses that come with your business and then also talk about the employees that come with that too. The biggest expenses would come for me would say the cost of the proteins, the meats. When I first started to do this, I would go to the local stores like Sam's Club, uh, Meyer, uh, Walmart, and I would be shopping all day long. I would literally be going from store to store, you know, checking the, the meat prices in the on, on online, trying to see what the best sales were for the week. But then I learned to get into the distribution uh, area where that meat is sourced out at a more higher rate. Obviously it's per pound. It's not just, you know, little sections of meat that they cut off for you at the grocery store. So I learned about that, but that's an expense that, you know, costs anywhere you know, from four to five thousand dollars. It just depends on the month. It depends on the events and the level of the events that you're gonna have. I would say per se for this event right now, I spent about a thousand dollars in just meat cost. Um, and that that goes for two days of an events. That's two catering events, but sometimes if we do an Ala Hoop event, if we do a major event, we're talking 500 to 700 pounds, and that's upwards of the 3,000 to 4,000 dollar range. So it does get pretty serious. It is a true investment. It's not something that you can kind of just mess around with. When you get to this level, it's it's really now learning your math. You're taking in, you know, the accounting for. You got to account for employees. You have to account for the food. You also have to account for the time that's used to do be here in the market. We have to cost, or excuse me, I'm charged for all of these types of things. The individuals who are behind me, the market that we're in currently right now, I'm charged for all those things and I have to be cost effective and smart in my choices of what events I'm gonna take and what events I don't take because there are events that are very lucrative, but there are also events that we just don't make very much or not any money at all. That's the reality of this business. So at the average event, how many employees do you need to have there to help you out? On an average event, we usually go about three guys. That's typically the standard of what we use, but if it's a larger event, I'm going up to seven to eight people, just depending on what I need as far as to get out the product. So if I'm at an event that I know I'm gonna have to have eight to nine people, I wanna source those individuals out smart, put them in the areas that they're gonna be strategically working the best at to get us the most sales. And that's definitely the most biggest object and point that we're trying to get across is to get the individuals there so that we can get as many tacos out to get as push as many agua frescas, all of our products out at a quick, fast pace. Can you talk about one of your like biggest events or maybe one that you sold the most tacos at? I had an event that was for West Ottawa. It was one of our first events that we had done. The individuals had came up, asked us to do another event that was gonna be local in Holland. So when we did that, we went to the fireworks. We got invited to that event because of the local individual that we knew. He invited us over to do La U, kind of getting connections with them. They ended up getting us into the fireworks. And so that night we ended up selling over uh, a little over three thousand tacos and that was the most tacos I had ever made didn't ever think I could make three thousand tacos and I never thought I would sell three thousand tacos or plus but that was a very very big moment for me and for the team we're all clapping all happy just super cheerful for 
the moment. And those are moments that we're looking forward to clear even more four, five, six, seven thousand, eight thousand tacos is what's up next. So we're just pumping up for more and more bigger gigs, more and more bigger uh, festivals, fiestas, any of those types of things that we could get our tacos and our product out. Can you talk about some of the sales like when you first started to maybe in the future and how that maybe grew or changed? When I first started, when we were making, we were grossing approximately about anywhere from 1500 to 2000 a month. And that was on average from just doing pop-up sales, not really having too much of a following, just trying to get things going. Now on average, we probably do an event like this week, just alone. We have three catering events, which would offer us about 6,000. So that's in approximately, you know, if we're doing those times three, that's about 28,000 for the month. Um, and that's typically where we can try to be in. We try to get into the 15 to 20, um, just times, it just depends on the season. If it gets into the winter months, it's a little harder time. Uh, we've noticed that the, the winter months kind of, you know, not so many people are wanting catering events, but come spring, summer and that, we're generating about 15 to 30,000 per month. What are some of the positives and what are some of the negatives to your business? I would say the positives, definitely the team, like morale, the guys that are always around, we're really pretty happy. We're usually pretty like just upbeat going. Like we love what we do. We love to be in the kitchen. We love like just uh, creating new dishes. Those are the types of things I love to do. And I definitely know the team loves to do that. So those are some of the positives. Definitely when we have a good time, when we sell, we sell big and we sell, sell out. Those are even huge things for us too. Those are big, you know, pluses for us in our book. The negatives, I would say definitely the setting up, the tearing down, the uh, after the long day when you've been going for 12 hours, you've been selling 3000 tacos, you still got to go and tear this all down, put it all away, take it out of the um, trailer, put it into the storage unit. It's definitely a lot of work. And sometimes those are the hard things to ask my guys to keep on trucking along when I know they've been busting their butts all day long. That's kind of a down when you don't sell very well and you got a lot of just product that sits there and you got to throw that product away or donate that product that's not always the best you know or funnest thing to do that's kind of a you know definitely a, a downer here in the the restaurant or kind of the catering taco cart taco truck business those are definite downs i those are something that i don't enjoy about this and just the stresses of kind of trying to remember every single little detail because there's tons of details in this and i'm talking about not only just following the levels of making sure that the food is being sanitized it's being uh done at the right temp it's not being you know held at the wrong temperatures that's one whole you know circus in itself but then i think also do just having to think about how the logistics how are we going to get to this event how are we going to be able to serve we don't know how many people are going to show up to us it could be 200 it could be 100 it could be 400 there's no real like true like knowing of an event like that those are downs that kind of you know we learn and we're just kind of trying to learn as you know the days go on and the events and more and more that we get used to this if you could choose events or catering which one would you choose for myself if i'm being honest i definitely i would choose the catering side of things because catering tends to be a little bit more laid out it's more simplified um i know how many guests is going to be there i know what i have to bring whether it's forks napkins cups any kind of table you know cloths things like that it's already preset for me so i know exactly how much meat to get i know how much i'm going to spend and i know what the guys have to do for that event and what they don't have to do for that event when you go to a large event you don't really have any of those types of things kind of laid out for you everything is a guesswork and everything's day of and you got to just figure it out as is can you talk about your menu and what you offer and uh, maybe what you'll offer in the future. Currently right now, what we offer is we offer carne asada, which is steak, it's a steak taco that we pride ourselves in. Very delicious taco that we have. Comes with a corn tortilla, um, usually served with cilantro or onion. We also do what's called a quesadilla, which is our top uh, seller that we have on the menu. Um, that's a beef chuck that we use, that we roast for seven hours, marinated in our chilies, and then we crisp it up on the grill on the flat top and uh, melt it with some cheese, some cilantro, some onion. And then we have a consomme that comes with it, which is a delicious broth that you dip the taco in. And then we have the regular media, which you just dip the taco in as well. We also offer agua frescas. We offer chicken tinga, which is a chicken that comes with delicious red salsa in it. It's really, really flavorful. Goes well with nachos, goes well in tacos. It, go, it goes well in taquitos. It doesn't go, it goes well in everything, basically. That's a great dish that we also offer as well. We also do nachos. We do walking tacos, which come with carne asada or the vidia in it. We're also gonna be doing it with the chicken tinga as well, just to offer three different options. 
options. In the future, we're looking to do a lot of stuff with cine or the churros. We want to do a lot of stuff with uh, just inventive stuff with the kind of play around with more of the sweets and things like that. We're going to kind of try to go into that area with agua frescas. We're going to do some churros. We're going to be doing our taquitos again, which was a big, big hit for us. They're just a small rolled up taco that we usually sell with three of those. And then you can dip that into the consume or into a salsa. That's a big uh, hit for us as well. We're going to bring that back. And then we're going to be also offering carnitas. It's a traditional uh, Mexican dish that you can find in Mexico, down in South Texas as well. My family is known for making it, so we definitely want to bring that to the table as well and bring that up to the West Michigan area. Do you have any plans on expanding and growing outside of just a stand? So our future is hopefully to be able to get into either a food truck. We're, we're kind of in the midst of looking at a food truck, but also looking at possibly doing just a restaurant. Not anything too big, not anything that would be, you know, 75 plus seater, something like that. Maybe a smaller scale, maybe a 20 to 30 seater maybe 40 cedar tops, it's just something that's local in the area that we can kind of uh, just grow within the area and kind of expand ourselves. And then it's going to be either the restaurant, then the food truck or the food truck, then the restaurant, but whatever way it's going to happen for hot box tacos in the future, I can tell you that. And then you have three tips of advice for any other entrepreneurs out there. Number one, if you start it, finish it. Don't give up. There's going to be times where you're going to feel like this isn't something for you. There's going to be times where this isn't easy. I've had times where I've grown, I've woke up, woke up in the middle of the night been super stressed. I'm not knowing if I really want to do hot box, but that's the test of what it is that you got to start a business with. That's definitely something that you just got to stick with. Keep going and don't give up. Uh, number two would be there's going to be peaks and valleys. That is just what this is. There's always going to be highs and then there's going to be lows. Try to be kind of even keel throughout the process. That's going to be the best for you to not kind of, you know, follow in the highs, but also don't go dropping in the lows. Just kind of try to keep in the middle and, and try to keep even keel. That's the best advice I could give you. Number three would be um, just go at it you know, grind, hustle, put yourself out there, show yourself in front of the cameras, get yourself out there in social media, whatever way you can plug yourself in your product and what you believe in, believe in yourself and put that out there and let people know how much you believe not only in yourself, but your product, and it will sell, it will go, I can promise you that.